You can't have great soda without great carbonation, and that's just the fact. Soda and the whole beverage category is built upon carbonated water. Now on the internet, most people would tell you it's pretty easy to get high carbonation. I disagree. Historically, at the soda fountains, they used to charge their fountains to 150 PSI. Now, it doesn't mean they were serving at 150 PSI. There's a couple things I'll go over shortly about that. But they were serving far more carbonated than the 15 PSI that we commonly get today in soda stream, soda guns, and most carbonation videos on the internet. And that's fine for toddlers, the infirmed, and the people with the weak constitutions. But I really want to make something up to 180 PSI, well, maybe even 150. But that's unlikely for a number of reasons. And as you can see this mess, this is the number of reasons. Now, usually my bench is a lot cleaner, but this is my fourth take on this video. I've been working on it for four weeks. And every time I do a take, something happens that requires me to either buy something or fiddle with something. And when I make videos, I have an objective and the objective is to give you the right information, just not put out another video to get more views. I'm here to try to educate you and show you why certain things are a certain way. Now, I'm gonna clean up this bench and then we will talk some more because this chaos bothers me, it probably bothers you. So let me clean this up and we'll talk in a second. That looks better. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. And as I mentioned in the intro, the old soda fountains pressurize 250 PSI, which is a lot different than the 15 to 30 PSI we see in most beverages today. Now, the, the closest comparison would be something like champagne, and I'll get to that in a second. But we have to look at the history of the soda fountain to understand how things worked. And one of the things was that people would just get a glass of soda and drink it quickly. It was not like a bar where you hung around. Maybe in the 1940s and onwards it was, but back in the 1890s and in that time period, you'd go in, you'd get your soda, you'd chug it, and you'd be out. Some people did hang around, but it wasn't, they weren't big facilities. They weren't like restaurants. They had a few tables, and most of them didn't have seats at the bar. You just stood at them, or the soda counter. And that, the idea was that this was just a, quencher, something you got on a hot day, you would just get your drink and move on. So when you pour a soda really quickly out of a fountain at a high pressure, people would drink them immediately. And you'd get that pungency that they talk about. You'd actually get a burst of carbon dioxide in your face. Now I'm gonna show you something and I'm gonna show you what 100 PSI looks like coming out of this tap. So I need a bigger glass here just to purge some, but you'll see, I just come screaming out and it's mostly foam, but that's okay if you're drinking this really fast because you're still getting the carbonation, you know, if you're drinking it quickly. But what you'll see is by the time that's all done, almost all the carbonation is gone. There is still some in there, but not a lot. So if we were to stir this up, like we don't get a lot of gas evolving from that. And that means all of the CO2 is gone. There is some in there because it's so cold, but most of your CO2 is gone. So that's why it's difficult to get this to 100 PSI out of a tap. Now, if you've ever brewed beer, you know that adding a lot of tubing for back pressure will help. Or you could use a flow control device. These work well when they're close to the keg. So there are ways to do that, and I'm gonna do a separate video on that. So uh, this will come in a separate video because it requires a whole different set of equipment, but it, it can work. But again, as it's coming out, there's a book from 1880 called Aerated Waters by Joseph Gould. And in that book, he basically explains everything and it's still relevant today. He talks about the percussion of water coming out so fast that when it hits the glass, it releases all its carbon dioxide. And that's actually what happens, is that the water just comes out too fast and you get this turbulent, chaotic mess. Now, when I studied chemistry, uh, I took engineering courses as well. And what we really want is laminar flow. And the opposite of laminar flow is turbulent flow. Now, laminar flow is a nice, smooth pour. So something out of a bottle. So let me show you a soda stream bottle. Now it's always good to pour into a chilled glass because the heat will cause carbon dioxide to come out. Now this is generally around 15 PSI. 
And when we pour it, you can see all the bubbles coming. But when we pour it, we're not messing the whole thing up. And you'll see gas constantly evolving from that for a period of time. Unlike this, which is still now, I mean, there's still a little bit of carbonation, but not that level. This is only around 15 PSI. So as we go through this video, we'll just leave this here and see what happens. But the idea is you want gas to come out so you can't have this percussion of a, a stream or a forced jet hitting a glass. Now it is known that if you have some syrup or other liquid in the bottom of glass, it does cushion it a bit. But what you really want is laminar flow. You want a really slow flow rate and there are ways to do it with a tap. But in all honesty, bottles are better. So when we look back on history, you know, through this lens, we can kind of see why the soda fountain failed. Even though in my book, Fix the Pumps, I wrote about how, you know, pharmacists were focusing more on modern medicine and didn't want to deal with soda fountains anymore. But that's not the whole truth. And this is kind of the discovery I made doing this video. The reality is, is bottled water is better because you get this laminar flow and you still get this evolution of carbon dioxide. Now, it's not exactly what I was expecting when I set this video up, but it makes sense. So if we were to carbonate this to 60 PSI and pour it, you know, we'd get this, but with a lot more gas evolving out of it. And I can give you a demonstration of that. So let me get something and I'll show you. Sparkling wine. So we're not using champagne today. Uh, we're just gonna use some Prosecco. But these are carbonated, they do say up to 80 PSI, 90 PSI, but pressure is always relative to temperature. So it could be 80 PSI at room temperature, but uh, as you chill down, the PSI is going to drop. So I'd say this is probably closer to 40 at the chilled temperature here. And obviously when you open champagne, though it's fun to pop the cork, it will degas your champagne or Prosecco. So you just want to give the cork a twist. And you'll get mild carbonation without it foaming up. And you obviously you want a nice clean glass. But that's a good level of carbonation. You get the bubbles coming out of this and it looks nice. And we're still getting gas coming out of this, which I've been talking for five minutes or so. So these are the types of carbonation you want. And this is gonna taste really carbonated. And as long as you have a clean glass, you're only gonna get a small amount of bubbles coming off. So part of the reason soda fountain may have failed bottled is better. I can get, these are fermentation bottles. They're good up to 238 PSI. I assume that's their burst strength. So even if we did 60 to 80 PSI, there's a lot of safety margin. So this will be another video I make. So we're gonna do a video on the tap. We're gonna do a video on making this in bottles because I think this is the real deal. And we're also going to talk about the difference between seltzer and club soda. It's actually not that much difference. And I gotta, there's a, some details that most people don't talk about, like how to get your carbonated water really carbonated. And that has to do with chilling, removing air from it. Um, those are the two most important things. And then obviously working on taste. So a way to get chlorine out that's really easy. But there are lots of different things. So this whole video will get turned into four videos. And this is just the introduction, but we're aiming for this level of carbonation. This idea that there's still gas evolving from this. And in Joseph Gould's book, he talks about wide mouth bottles for this exact purpose. And this just allows you to pour nice and easily without degassing your water. So, Again, this is what we're going for, but we want to do it at 60 PSI. And for anyone curious about siphons, they suck. Uh, they have the same problem as this, except for you can't put flow control on them. So you can't put this device or longer lines to create back pressure. It just comes screaming out of it. They look cool, good for comedy sketches, but not necessarily great for drinks. And the other thing about bottled soda is that you can do counter pressure filling of the bottle. So you can put the pressure of the bottle at 60 PSI, 
and then fill it up with the 60, the pressurized liquid at 60 PSI or 80 PSI. And what happens is that you don't lose any of the carbonation. So there are benefits. And if you're curious about mineral waters, they're usually well below 15 PSI, you know, maybe 10, 10, 12, sometimes less. Uh, they don't come out of the round, out of the ground, highly carbonated. And again, just for the record, these are still bubbling. This one's doing really well. Again, cold glass makes a difference. And this one is bubbling. And it tastes highly carbonated. So you get that just like um, kind of the burst of the carbonation in your mouth. And that's kind of when you're talking about flavors, people often think their soda's kind of weak. Good carbonation is going to help spread all the flavors, whether you're making a root beer or a cola or whatever you want. Carbonation helps that. So if you're getting low carbonation, stick around. I will be dealing with that. But that's the basics. And I will get into actually making the carbonation in the next video. And there are benefits to tank carbonating. And you can either do just mineral waters. You can do just plain old carbonated water. Or you can do stuff like root beer in it. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next video. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. I'm going to go drink some Prosecco now.